everyone. Welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So this week we're back on the five axis mill. This is the Haas UMC 750 SS. And we've got another project. We're gonna machine a electronic housing out of this block of scrap aluminum right here. And it's gonna be about two inches by three inches. And we're gonna do things a little different this time. So in the previous episode, I used the Dragonfly Work Holding Solution 6 million, otherwise known as the, the uh, bench vise, which I can show you right here. Yeah, we used that guy before. So now we're gonna get a little more advanced and I've actually machined a new work holding solution out of another big block of billet aluminum. So we can take a look here when the plane flies over. Yeah, so this is the new work holding solution and basically it's, it's basically a pyramid machined out of a block of scrap aluminum. It's a, I don't know, it's about seven inches tall and eight inches by three and a half inches thick. And we've got the kind of a pyramid top there with a slot that has set screws in it. And then an additional uh, pedestal that is set screwed into the first set of set screws. Let me spin the, the table around so you can get an edge view. So if we spin this around, you can kind of see the situation that, that I've got here. So the stock that we're going to rough cut for our electronic enclosure is gonna have a tab in the bottom and it's gonna fit into this slot here, which is an adapter uh, due to uh, spindle clearance on the table and other features here for all of the tooling that we're gonna to use to cut this electronic enclosure. So, we, you know, we're probably not gonna use the bench vise too much anymore since that uh, I've invested a little bit of time in machining this and, and this was basically machined on this, on this five axis as well. So I've got a little bit of footage of this being cut, but these facets, these clearance facets for the, the spindle to come in all directions. And we are going to slap our stock right on here. Uh, so I'm gonna head over to the, to the bandsaw and cut out the rough. And then on the other Haas TM1, I'm gonna machine this, this, this tab profile that we're gonna use to lock our stock into this holder. So I'll meet you over at the bandsaw. So yeah, I am actually using that, that bandsaw that I bought at the auction, the VBS350, which is, I think, about as old as I am. But it's in service. Still need to redo the, the blade welder, of course. It seems like all the blade welders on old bandsaws don't work. Okay, we're over here at the Haas TM1 mill. This is the tool room mill. So I'll load this up. I'm not too concerned because this is all just Kind of rough machining just to hold the stock, but I do want to clamp it down pretty good. All right, so I hammer this guy in. And I'm just feeling the parallels and they, they're both snug now. This one was a little loose before I tapped it in there. I got other code in there. T8 automatic tool change. I'm just gonna skim off the top of our stock here to get a, a flat bottom for our mounting tab into the five axis mill. Whenever I change direction, I, I double check the speed of the travel per mouse click or MDI click so that uh, your mill doesn't run away from you. So it's good to get in the habit of always clicking direction and magnitude of travel. There we go, we just touched the top. And X will move over, and I'm just hand jogging all this. Looks like my shell mill may be a little dull. All right, so I, I like that height, so I'm gonna hit jog lock, and we'll go 0 0.01 and then X. And I can speed it up. And I'm just looking for a, basically a, a facet that is square to the bottom of this stock, which was a machine finish, which is also referenced to these two parallels. And that should be enough uh, for our purposes. Okay, so we're Z minus 0.49 and 
I will go ahead and cut through. And we're at 75% horsepower. So I may slow down. I'll, I'll pick the uh, smaller jog setting. You can see some steam shooting off there. If you don't keep the tool cool when you're going this, taking off this much aluminum, then it'll just weld up on your flutes of your, of your carbide end mill and break off. <laughs> Okay, so we get our stock and I got some decent set screws in here. We just want to check the inside dimensions of our notch. We bring our notch in and then we want it to be centered a quarter inch stick out on each side plus a little bit of saw curve and stuff. It doesn't have to be exact, but the closer the better. All right, so that's a quarter inch right there. Then I will tighten up our set screw I'll tighten one side first. Make sure there's not much of a stock roll. And I've got uh, sharp points, which will dig in pretty good. And a long T-handle driver here. And I'm basically doing the same thing that those, that those serrated biting vice jaws do. I don't, I, I don't know what they're called, but the ones you see on, that other people use on YouTube. Well, here I'm just using individual set screws with uh, like a, a sharp point to dig into this aluminum tab in this frame here. And this is enough, has been enough so far to hold my stock in place. And then there's more set screws on the back and I'll tighten these up as well. So we're gripping from both directions. All right, so I'm gonna hit the, let's see here, zero return button and then all on the controller. And we'll bring everything back to square. This is mostly for the table itself. So without further ado, I think I will, with the cell phone, I'll get, yeah, so with the cell phone, I'll get over here onto the controller and I'll hit memory. And our program is there. I'll hit 50%. No, let's do 25% rapid since it's been about four days since I ran this before. And we'll hit cycle start. And I'll have my finger ready on the hold button. And the first tool is this 3 8 end mill. And we're cutting. I think I'll slow everything down. I'll do a 70% feed rate. Now hopefully the screen protector is gonna help. I guess it kind of helps. No, not really. <laughs> I think I could probably slow down the, the feed and the spindle and then shut the coolant off for a second so you can see what we're doing in here. So we're doing relatively shallow passes because normally this runs in production a lot faster than this. Of aluminum chips to recycle. And down here is the 
line filter for the clock return. And the whole base of this mill is full. And then the chip hopper goes up. This is our camera. The screen protector, I don't know if it's going much. Now it's finishing up the corners. See what our next tool is. That was an option stop that we had. Here's the camera looking at our supposed drip suppressor, but it's more like a drip keeper. <laughs> I don't know, the image isn't bad, I guess. Just a little foggy. Here we're machining out some, some round bosses, I believe. Oh no, actually this is, this is machining out a big uh, cable uh, strain relief on the back of this box. Let's see if we can zoom in. You may be able to start to see it. Yeah, there's the beginnings of a, there's a hole there and like a cable strain relief circle or a bezel. Maybe a little bit of chatter in the stock, but not too bad. I better turn the coolant back on. Yeah, I just can't get a nice crisp image through all this coolant soaked window. But here we're doing a finish on that uh, on that facet or that face with our with our big cable guide circle in the middle there. On this side, there's a couple of metal bosses that are machined. Try to pick up some of this profile on this first lighter cut. You probably see there's a big edge on that cut with the, uh, or a big burr, which may indicate that the tool's getting a little dull or with me not running the coolant for photography, we can be getting a, a little bit of a buildup edge. All right, we're finishing the base of the front of our connector or electrical housing with those two metal bosses standing there. Oh, 
we'll see what's next. I'm gonna hit the option stop again. in the outer profile. And option stop. So I hit a cycle start basically between tool changes. Here we're profiling the inside diameter. This is a, a couple of electrical connector holes in the front panel. And option stop again. So basically there's a little hold line and then you hit cycle start. And then the middle does a full change for the next operation. Yeah, it's starting to starting to take shape. We're just cleaning up a front corner there from the quarter inch tool radius. Still cleaning up the corners with this eighth inch end mill. Should have a tool change pretty soon. cleaning up those corners. Here it's asking me to hit cycle start again. The option stop, so I hit cycle start. Yeah, this looks like another eighth inch end mill. This is like a, a lid pocket that it's refining. Basically cleaning up uh, tool radius corners as well. Now we're gonna cut some side grooves. Let her turn the pulling on.
Well, it's a noisy pump. We're at our next option stop here. I'll hit cycle start. Now we're really flying. We're doing a radius on the outside diameter, or on the outside edge. So this is kind of a 3D raster, spiral raster. That's why it's going so fast, because it's just rounding off the, the machined edge. So it is kind of like a, a cleanup, but it's an actual specific radius on the outside. And that's a, a, a 1 8 inch ball end mill, or a 3.2 millimeter ball end mill. And again, it's a 3D raster. If I had a radius tool, this would be a little faster, but sometimes radius tools are a hassle to get both tips of the radius blended just right. And here it's actually interpolating the, the tetrahedrons in the, uh, in the 3D model itself that was imported. So 3D models are basically a bunch of triangles that make up a 3D part, as well as surfaces and or curves that are truncated into line segments. So it's actually machining a bunch of little micro triangles that are artifacts of the 3D model. That's what that hopping is. It's drawing one little triangular facet, hopping up out of the part, dropping in for the next little triangular facet. It's really just artifacts from the code, uh, from, the, from the CAD model itself. Now we're going to deburr the tip here. Well, which is also another round raster pattern. So there's a faceted angled face that dumps into the bottom flat on the side of this part. So the easiest ways to do it is to, is to do this, this 3D raster where we're just kind of scanning back and forth super fast and cutting a, uh, an angled face that dumps into the bottom face. Otherwise, you've got to deal with tool blend issues again. And this is a small run part. Find a good spot. So it's just kind of scrubbing in that, that faceted face. Picking up a resonance in the, in the mill housing. There we go. It's going back and forth super fast. Oh, it's done. <laughs> and now the other side. Oh, the spindle's spinning at 12,000 RPM right now. There we found the resonance on the enclosure of the mill. It's that ticking sound. Okay, now we're going to mill the sides out, or the bottom edge of the part, and this will need coolant. So this is the beginning of parting off the, or tabbing off the, the part itself. But there's some more operations we're going to do. This is just roughing it so that we can do the, the bottom uh, corner radius as well. 
it's kind of a bigger cut, so I'm gonna keep leave the coolant on. be deburring. This is always fun to watch. Oh, I actually drill centering too. And deburring. We'll do a feed hold, fix the camera, and cycle start. We're cleaning up the uh, connector holes there. Putting a chamfer on those posts, which is a feature. So we're making some center drills and then threaded hole champers all in one shot with that 45 degree tool. I'm gonna do some drilling. Got some M3 threaded holes in this, in this uh, enclosure. Drill the side holes. Going to drill peck. This is rigid tapping, so the Z-axis and the RPM are, are synced up to match the spiral of the tap, the M3 tap, which is 0.5 millimeters per revolution. Never get a mill that doesn't do rigid tapping. <laughs> from the back. <laughs> Let's see if it'll advance the carousel. Oh, that's a nice nasty sound. Oh, this is actually an interesting operation. We're cutting a countersink from the inside of the part all the way through. So there's a long spindly end mill that is reaching all the way through the part and cutting a countersink inside of the box through that access hole. So if we look, there's like a crazy angle on the table, which isn't quite square. It's at like a 10 degree angle. And we're sneaking in a uh, 
a very long spindly end mill to cut a countersink using a rafter cut. So that horrible screeching sound was like a three inch or like a 75 millimeter by three millimeter end mill rattling as it's cutting metal. So there it did the angle fix so it could reach the other countersunk hole. Now it's gonna sound really nasty for a second or two. So we finished with that super long spindly tool uh, ball end mill for chamfering the inside of the housing. So we're at the option stop, so I'll hit cycle start. And now I think we're going to radius the bottom side of the part. I think I can turn off the coolant for this one. It's going quick. <laughs> so we're doing a, a, a radius on the bottom side of the part, which normally you would have to, you know, cut your part off, fixture it in a second hop, and then, and then uh, do this in a three axis mill. Or by undercutting the part, you can you can do bottom radius cutting with a raster style ball end mill. So that, that notch we had, to, we had to cut out first uh, before we could actually do this underside profiling stuff. Here, still having issues. Still has a little issues with the artifacts from the 3D model. That's what it's doing right there. And the table changed angles a little bit too, so we could kind of get under there a little a little better. And we're hopping over the feature that's getting in the way of the radius blend. This is where we finish tabbing off the part so that there's just a little sliver of metal left holding it on. Kind of need cooling on this operation. close. Okay, we're done. That was in the program. All right, so here's our part with a tiny little tab. <laughs> Making the bobblehead part. 
this is the side. Of course, the top. The other side. And the back side. So you can see those counter sunk holes in there. Those are the ones that needed to have the tool fit to this hole, angled apart, and then cut that counter sink in there. Should we tear it off? There we go. And now I'm going to stick this on the TM1 mill that we started with and fly cut or with a shell mill cut this final surface to dimension and finish. But that is our finished part. You actually can't counter bore the top right hole because <laughs> the wall's in the way. So we actually had to tilt the part like this uh, in the cutter view to actually counter sink those inner holes in there with a ball end mill. So that was kind of fun to do. But yeah, so this is it. So let's load this thing up on the Haas TM1 mill with that shell mill and we will finish off our part by cleaning up the last 10 thousandths intentionally left for tool gouge and things. Okay, so for our final operation, we'll just take our pre-finished surface and it's such, it's designed such that we can clamp it in a simple vise like this in the center. I'll tap it down. I'm feeling the parallels. Make sure that we are square. I'll do 2000 RPM. Now we're we'll bringing our shell mill. And I'm just gonna touch off the surface of the aluminum and blend our radius that was cut on the five axis. So I'm just looking for first touch, which is there. And that looks like a pretty good blend there. Then I hit Y plus to go back the same direction. And I think we are done. Yeah, I don't feel a lip anymore. So that's good. Yeah, all the way around. Seems to have held within a couple of thousands, so that's, which is nice. Okay, we're done. So here is our finished machine part. Now I, I will Brillo some of these surfaces so they all blend together. So that's our part. Thank you guys for watching Dragonfly Engineering. And I'll see you for the next part that we make on the Haas 5-axis mill.